Good evening, Richmond County, and welcome to another edition of the RO Sports Show brought to you by RO Yellow. After taking some time off and driving a new car, Daniel Neal didn't expect to win the second round of MB Drift's competition series Saturday at Rockingham Speedway. Of the 15 drivers skidding along the Speedway's road course, the judges decided Neal was the best drifter of the day, earning him $500 and a bottle of champagne. Neil, an engineer technician from Charleston, South Carolina, who has been driving for about five years and competing since 2018, just returned to the scene after taking a year off following a failure with a former BMW. This is my first time in a year competing. So I took a year off because I had a previous failure uh, with a BMW that I had and uh, the engine just didn't last very long. So we took the year off and tried to figure some stuff out. And uh, what we did in that year off was just kind of reevaluate what we wanted to do with competition or just keeping it fun. And uh, so uh, right now we're deciding to keep it fun even though we're on a competition day. But I mean, this is, this is grassroots. So that's keeping it fun for me. You know, going to Pro-Am or Pro-2 or Pro-Spec, they're calling it these days. That's, uh, it seems like it kind of takes away from the fun a little bit. So we're deciding to stay on this level for a little while. <laughs> and uh, how long have you been drifting? Uh, so I've probably been drifting about five years now. Okay. Yeah. So I, Competitively? Well, I didn't right. start out competitively, okay. you know, because everybody has to learn that first part just to learn how to handle a car at this speed and at this rate of angle. And to pull an e-brake, to power over a clutch kick, that's all things you kind of have to learn before you can really get into a competition like this and take a win. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been competing? Competing, I think about three years. Okay. Three or four. And then a year off. <laughs> and then a, and then a, a year, year off. off in between. And then coming back to a win like this, man, it feels amazing. <laughs> and what kind of car do you have? This is a Nissan Silvia. It has a SR20 BBT in it, fully built engine. And we've got it tuned to 350 horsepower. Okay. Um, so have you ever driven on a course I've, like this? I've never driven on a course like this one per se. I have driven road courses, I've driven ovals. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a, uh, this track was a little tough at first, especially with a car I've never driven. I've never driven this car before oh. today. <laughs> so it was a little tough at first, but once I learned to handle the car, once I learned its little quirks, um, it was pretty simple, pretty easy. What was the most challenging? So the most challenging is coming from Sweeper 1. Uh, from Sweeper 1, there's a, a long distance and where you have to switch back to come into the next Sweeper. And that's where I had a problem. The clutch on this car, it's not handling third gear. So in third gear, it's slipping quite a bit. So we're having to run it the whole track in second gear, which is making it bounce off of rev limiter the whole time. How old are you? I'm 28. 28. 28, yes sir. Alright. Uh, what made you decide to get into this? Uh, well, honestly, <laughs> it's a weird situation. I had a Jeep Cherokee and uh, it, was, it was lifted and everything. And a guy wanted to trade me for it and he saw a 240 SX. And at first I was like, you know, it's not something I've ever driven before, but uh, something about the car, I liked it. And then I started doing research on the car and I saw that there was drifting and there was, it was a really big scene in Japan because back when I saw it, it was a little slower back then but once I saw it like it was like immediate like I have to do this you know as growing up as a child we lived on a dirt road I had a good car and uh, it was like a hard packed dirt and it, it created like a film of sand on top so I could take the go-kart and I could slide it and slide it and I just did that for hours so when I saw that this was a competition it was something that you could actually do and take it farther and possibly make a career with it, I knew that's what I wanted to do. So it's just, I'm a little sad that I haven't been able to get to a higher rank so far. And that's mostly with financial, no backers. I mean, I don't make enough money to finance myself, everything that I need, so. What's your day job? My day job, I work as an engineer technician for Cummins. So pretty much I just babysit engines, make sure they don't blow up, put them on test, test them. You know, put them through rigorous testing. Okay. Uh, anything else you want to add? Um, today was amazing. Uh, I cannot believe we got the win today. I really, I had 
low expectations coming out with an untested car, me not being testing for a year, and then to take second in qualifying and first, I'm over, I'm over the moon. <laughs> I am over the moon. This is amazing. Drivers lined up along the front stretch of the Speedway's oval, roaring counterclockwise and entering the road course about midway between turns four and three. Cars were solo for qualifying and ran tandem for the competition, with drivers taking turns leading and following. Drivers Jody Utsi and Nathan McDuffie, the day's number one qualifier, placed second and third respectively. First round winner TJ Gutierrez finished in eighth place, but leads in the point standings, followed by Utsi. Dan Selwa, John Boozum, Drake Carter, Neil McDuffie, and Steven Larson. The next competition is slated for June 12th, and the fourth and final round is scheduled for August 14th. Now, following a successful test on last Thursday with Hoosier Tires, officials with the Cars Tour announced the following morning that it will be bringing a race to the rock later this year. The race was originally slated for March 6th, but was postponed after the second test in late December to develop a new tire compound for the legendary track, which hasn't hosted a full track race since 2013. Now, instead of being the opening race of the Cars Tour season, it will be the final race of the Cars Tour season. Race promoters Charlie Hansen and Mike Stoddard said in December that if the race had gone on as scheduled, driving teams would have had to change tires twice in a 75-lap race. Short Track Scene reported that a small piece of pavement on the exit of Turn 2 broke off and punctured the grill of a car during the December 22nd test, which led to a decision to use restrictor plates. There will be open testing for teams on September 18th, October 30th, and November 5th. Justin Jones, Vice President of Operations for the Speedway, told the RO that several positive comments were made about the recent renovations at the track since the December test. Those renovations include a lot of repainting and landscaping, according to Jones. He added that they are also installing fiber optics and gaining ground on the paintball field for the inaugural First Responders Royale in June. He said there will be more changes in the coming month or so at the Speedway property as they work on bringing it back to its former glory. Following the close of the high school girls soccer season this weekend, Richmond saw five players and its head coach recognized on the 2021 All-SAC team. Jayla McDougall, Ellie Buck, Paxley Faircloth, Caitlin Huff, and Bobby Faircloth were named to the 25-player roster. It was also the first time for all five Lady Raiders to earn the postseason accolade. Richmond head coach Chris Larson also wrapped up his third season at the helm of the program and was named the SAC's Coach of the Year. Richmond's all-conference selections were announced over the weekend after Pinecrest lost in the NCHSAA 4A state championship game. Pinecrest's Lauren Landry was named Player of the Year as the Lady Patriots had a conference best six selections. Lumberton's Diamond Harris earned Goalkeeper of the Year. 
After a slow start to begin the season, the Richmond baseball team continued to trend in the right direction by collecting its third straight victory on Tuesday. The Raiders kicked off their fourth SAC series of the spring at home against Hope County and rolled to a 10-3 win behind a strong outing from junior pitcher Will Dawkins. It was also senior night for Richmond, which honored Tony Gathings, Hunter Hancock, and Michael Petit with a memorable victory over the Bucks. Dawkins went five innings on the mound for the Raiders, giving up two unearned runs on two hits while striking out five batters. It was a handful of juniors who helped produce a season-high 10 runs, starting with Matthew Walker and his game-high three hits and three RBIs. Austin Johnson added two hits and an RBI, and Cameron Way added a hit and an RBI. Richmond will look to get back to the 500 mark and earn its second straight series win with a road game against the Bucks on Friday. First pitch from Rayford is slated for 7 p.m. Opening its two-game series against Scotland on Tuesday, the JV baseball team used some late runs to earn a 5-1 victory. Head coach Corey Wallace and the JV Raiders continued their successful start to the season, collecting seven hits off the Fighting Scots to improve the 6-1. Freshman pitcher James Eason recorded his first win, throwing six innings and allowing just one run on five hits. He also punched out 12 batters at the plate. Sophomore pitcher Walker Lambeth cemented the win with a scoreless bottom at the seventh, striking out two batters. Both teams played a scoreless first three innings, but the JV Raiders broke it open with three runs in the top of the fourth frame. The JV Raiders will look to sweep the Fighting Scots when they host Scotland on Friday at 5 p.m. Both teams will play another two-game series later this season. Returning to the court for the first time in eight days, the Richmond Senior High School girls tennis team split Tuesday's conference doubleheader. The Lady Raiders took the opening match against visiting Jack Britt 5-4 before falling in the latter match 4-5. In the opening contest, Richmond split the six singles matches with the Lady Buccaneers before earning two wins and doubles play to earn the win. Collecting the singles wins for Richmond were Kaylee Parker, Kirsten McDonald, and Neely Turner. The official schedule for the 50th season of Richmond Raider football was released by the program on Friday. As high school sports looks to return to a normal timeline after a modified 2020-2021's calendar, the Raiders and fifth-year head coach Brian Till will play a 10-game regular season. Richmond will play a four-game non-conference schedule against four teams that made the NCHSAA state playoffs in 2020, followed by six conference games in a new 3A, 4A split conference. Till explained that the non-conference schedule has been almost two years in the making as teams make two-year agreements to play one home game and one away game. The four non-conference teams the Raiders will play are Mount Tabor, Butler, Cardinal Gibbons, and South View. In 2020, the Mount Tabor Spartans went 11-0 and won the 3AA state championship. Cardinal Gibbons won the 4A East Regional Championship and finished as the state's runner-up for the second year in a row, while Butler made an appearance in the 4A West Regional Championship. Southview also made the 4A East State playoffs, but made an exit in the second round, the same round the Raiders lost to Cardinal Gibbons. Till said scheduling such a competitive non-conference slate will continue to build the program while also hopefully helping the Raiders make deep playoff runs. And that's going to wrap up another edition of the RO Sports Show, brought to you by RO Yellow. For the latest and breaking sports stories in Richmond County, you can always visit richmondobserver.com and click on the Sports tab. You can also find some exclusive content across all RO Sports social media. And be sure to tune in for Ross at 5.30 every Thursday evening for your Raider and Racing wrap-up. In the meantime, I'm Russell Parker, reporting from the Richmond studio in downtown Rockingham. Have a great week.